I had wanted to become, well, first I thought I wanted to be an artist, and then I discovered that there was a history of the arts, which was much more interesting to me, how things came to be, um, how they were funded, and what the political motivation behind them might be political or, or very often religious in the period that I was working on. And so I was able to get a BA with um, a major field in art history at my old undergraduate school, which is now called McDaniel College. And I took the MA at Oberlin, which then offered it in the history of art. And had still has a beautiful museum with very fine examples of modern painting as well as Renaissance and uh, little Baroque, some fine medieval objects as well. I, I decided I wanted to move on and get the PhD and I called my uh, major professor at Oberlin who was a, a German scholar who was very famous in the field of 17th century landscape and asked him where I could go uh, to work on the PhD and he said well as a young woman you have two choices Michigan and Wisconsin and he was quite right as a young woman I was not eligible to go to Harvard Yale or Princeton, I could go to Columbia, they would let you in but not out. And I thought, well, I know the chairman of the department at Wisconsin who was here at Oberlin last semester giving a talk on his brand new book uh, that he wrote on his Guggenheim Fellowship uh, called The Craft of Old Master Drawings. And so I, I wrote both to Michigan and to Wisconsin, and uh, Wisconsin offered me more money, and I also had known, and they did that because I had met the chairman, I'm quite sure, who knew he would not be getting a pig in a poke, as <laughs> we would say. It was really not being able to go to any of the Ivy League schools. I was admitted to Wisconsin. I could get a plane, I could get a grant, from the Fulbright people to start with and then from ACLS or other foundations. I could fly over the pole over New York, who needed that, <laughs> over Harvard and everybody, land in the Netherlands or Germany or Switzerland or France and work with the best people there who are way better let me tell you, than some 75% of what is, was available at the time in the United States. Well, I think my crowning achievement, probably my most important book was my uh, biography of Albrecht Dürer, which incorporates discussion to some extent of his production, but goes more deeply into his intellectual life, his attraction for Lutheranism, which was the last gasp. This was still underway. Um, he, he was one of the first people to collect Luther's pamphlets and to go to a seminar about the theses that Luther would later um, nail to the door of the castle church it was really through my uh, work with 15th century prints, uh, in fact with my doctoral dissertation, that I was invited to help with the catalog of the big exhibition in Amsterdam at the Rijksmuseum of the work of the so-called master of the Amsterdam cabinet or the Hausbuchmeister, as the Germans call him, who was um, the first artist who worked extensively in dry points rather than engraving. Well, my, I was very fortunate with 
professor, it's my original major professor at Mac, what's now McDaniel College, later became the director briefly of the Baltimore Museum of Art and then went on to George Washington University to head the Department of Classics and Archaeology. They were very kind to me there and I was able later on to utilize the Kunsthistorische Institute in Munich, which is the best art history library anywhere, especially for my purposes. And the director there uh, we brought to Wisconsin to give a special seminar, um, Willibald Sauerlander, who often writes for the New York Review of Books and has an amazing ability to write about he, he was a medievalist to begin with, but he can write about anything. I would advise any person thinking of going in right now to art history, think twice. It is not a very lucrative thing to do. There, there are other things you can do if, if you want to make money, uh, forget art history. It is hard to get your book published any longer. Many publishers, these are expensive books, they don't want to put out for really good color plates. I was lucky to be talking about drawings and engravings, which are not that expensive to um, reproduce, but um, to have a full color altar piece by you name it. Uh, this is hard anymore. Getting tenure without a book is impossible. Many s schools are not putting everybody on the tenure track in the first place. They try to cut corners, deputize the librarian or something to teach whatever. So you're not necessarily going to get the best instruction. You have to look very carefully at the college catalog and the credentials of people you would think of uh, working for. It's easier, it, it used to be in my generation, we could get grant money to go to Europe much more easily than we can now. I sat for a long time on the Fulbright um, grants for Belgium, um, Holland, and France. I'd like to be remembered as somebody who opened doors or opened people's eyes to something that perhaps they hadn't known about or hadn't thought about or hadn't understood quite fully before. Uh, it always delighted me to have, especially my um, PhDs who all were very sensitive to works of art and often saw things that I hadn't noticed myself. And when I learned something, as I always did from their work, uh, that, that was a big payment uh, for me. Thank you.